Yes. I mean, I just thought I'd answer the question. I mean, this is obviously not the end of the video. I'm gonna get more into it, like, later on. How's it going, everyone? This is the Anime Man. So, my boys, have you heard of the new Netflix original anime series by the name of Devil Man Crybaby and how much it is creating such a positive discussion over within the anime community? I say probably not because whenever we hear the words Netflix and anime put together, we tend to think of shit like, I'll bring her a big Toblerone. I brought you a big Toblerone. You don't deserve this big Toblerone. <laughs> oh, such. Mm, beautiful, nostalgic, mm, meme crap. But lo and behold, there is a new Netflix original anime series that is just taking the anime community by storm at the moment called Devil Man Cry Baby, where it's gotten to the point where people are even willing to call it anime of the year. Guys, you do realize that uh, we're only like three weeks into the new year and you're already going to call this the anime of the year 2018. Really, guys? See, I only ask that because uh, I completely agree with you. Like, don't take it the wrong way. I'm right there with you, my hype beast brethren. I, too, am a hype man. Do you see that subtle devil man reference I just made right there? Yeah, okay, I really suck at writing jokes. Moving on. So, for those of you who have no fucking idea what Devil May Cry Baby is about, allow me to explain. Devil May Cry Baby follows the story of Akira, a crybaby bitch boy who loves running. I mean, it's true. Like, I'm not... I'm not hating or anything. One day he meets up with his once friend Yor, who tells him that these so-called demons are going to resurrect from this world and basically destroy all of mankind. So being the BFF that he is, Akira decides to help Dior along with his quest. But in order to defeat these demons, good guy Dior right here suggests to Akira to fuse together with a demon for himself to become a demon in order to kill the demons. Dude, I don't know about you, but that's some, uh, that's some Final Fantasy X logic right there. Yo, dog, I heard Sin is trying to kill humanity, so let me kill Sin in order for me to become Sin to destroy all of humanity. Sounds great in theory, not that great in practice. Or maybe it did for Akira, since instead of becoming just another demon, he becomes a demon whilst maintaining his human heart, ultimately becoming a devil man. Well, who saw that coming besides everyone? Now, the plot of this show sounds simple enough, right? I mean, to put it in perspective, it's not exactly the most interesting or unique or invigorating story we've seen in anime before. I mean, of course not. It's based off a manga series from 46 years ago. So obviously it's not going to live up to the standards of the modern anime community who always needs to look for something new and refreshing to satiate their polarizing tastes and opinions. Well, I guess there was another man who thought that exact same thing, a man by the name of Masaki Yuasa, who happened to also be a director for some of the most visually stimulating and fucked up animations that a Japanese man could muster up. And that's when he saw the Devilman manga and uttered the now famous Masaki Yuasa quote. Hold my beer fam. Then Yuasa said, let there be God. And there was God. And Yuasa saw the God. That it was good. Then you were saying, let there be titties. And there was titties. And you were saw the titties. That it was good. And you were divided the gold from the titties. I'm just kidding. He combined both of them together because it's, it's fucking amazing. It's fucking. Lord be praised! Now, in all seriousness though, Devil May Crybaby was everything that I expected from a Masaki Yuasa directed work. If you're familiar with any of his other works, then you would know that there are many aspects of his series that just stand out from the rest. This can be anything from animation to cuts to art style choices to color palettes. Basically, this guy has a clear vision that he can somehow blend perfectly into any piece of any genre. Now, am I saying that Devil May Cry Baby is Masaki Yuasa's best work? Probably not. On a personal level, I think Yuasa's best work is either in Kaiba or Tatami Galaxy. But that is, of course, not saying that Devil May Cry Baby was bad. I mean, fuck, it's so fucking good, I can't. But as much as I'd like to continue sucking the holy dick of Yuasa, I think there is a more hidden aspect of the Devil May Cry Baby adaptation, which really just created so much more of an invigorating experience with, of course, the help of USS directing and filmography that I don't think a lot of other people who have made videos on this series have really touched up on. I mean, to be fair, it's kind of my fault since I haven't really watched anyone else's video on Devil May Cry Baby yet. Should probably work on that. And that's the work done by music producer 
Ushio Kensuke. The music in this series just works so goddamn well. Everything from the demonic chanting blended with EDM influenced dance music, to the beatboxing segments they sprinkled throughout the show to make story exposition that much more interesting to listen to than another fucking cafe talking scene. I feel many people seem to undermine or not appreciate enough how powerful a good soundtrack is to an anime. I mean sure, we can all dance along to a groovy anime opening or ending, but entire soundtracks in an anime are just so goddamn important and so very powerful, especially for emotionally driven shows like this one and many others. Because for those of you who are wondering, this is the same guy who did the soundtrack to another USA directed series called Ping Pong the Animation, and he even was the music composer for the legendary anime film A Silent Voice. So obviously, um, this guy knows what the fuck he's doing in terms of music. But let me just go back to uh, suck the holy USA dick for just a second. I think it's fairly obvious that the reason why there are so many of us who absolutely love the show was because of its pure rawness. Which is something that I feel we've unfortunately been missing out on from the anime world, especially recently. I mean, of course, there are shows like Parasite that try to bring back the classics in a new, fresh light. And other newer shows like ReZero, which try to play around with its rawness in a completely untouched and fresh trend base of Isekai. And as much as I love both adaptations of Parasite and ReZero in their own ways, there's just something about Devilman Crybaby's visuals and animations and USS directing that makes it just that little extra raw without it being too overly edgy? Because that's a fucking term that the anime community loves to throw around, whose definition died last year with the fidget spinner trend. And I think a large part of that, while being Occam's Razor, does have to do with the fact that it just looks different. I feel Yuasa's visual and directing always calls for a more mature look into his anime. And as much as I absolutely hate using that word, with the subject matter that is dealt within Devil May Cry Baby's story and visuals, it's kind of unavoidable to use. Because God forbid you show Devil May Cry Baby to your three-year-old, like, what are you, a devil man? Daddy, why did that tentacle thing come out of that girl's boobies? Shut up, son. Daddy's trying to enjoy some modern art. Daddy, you have a tentacle too! Let's just say the devil man won't be the only crybaby in the room after that. There's this one term that us anime YouTubers and unfortunately a lot of pretentious anime elitists on the internet like to use when describing Masaki Yuasa's work, and that is the word Sakuga. Sakuga, as an anime term adopted in the West, refers to animation that takes no shortcuts. Animated pieces where each keyframe is meticulously drawn rather than taking shortcuts through processes like tweening. If all that technical jargon just went over your head, it basically basically means uh, really fucking good animation. Not busting visuals, the cocaine for your eyes, the visual marijuana for your brain. Look, I'm clearly not good at metaphors, all right? Shut up. A lot of Sakuga is used for action scenes and slow motion scenes in most regular anime, but what Masaki Yuasa manages to do really well is basically implement good Sakuga throughout the entire series. And in order to do something that would otherwise cost a bajillion dollars and take a gazillion hours to animate normally, he purposely cuts down on visuals by stylizing his characters, their movements, backgrounds, and environmental elements without a seeming too underdeveloped. But what Yuasa managed to do with Devil May Cry Baby was basically all of what I just said, but also make everything look fucking amazing. So either Netflix paid Yuasa just a fuck ton of money in order to make this adaptation, or Yuasa really is the son of Christ. Or if we're going with the storyline of Devil Man, son of Satan? But then again, haters, aren't we all? Oh, by the way, for all of you who were saying that the ending was uh, anticlimactic, I uh, hate to break it to you, but that's exactly how the original manga ended 46 years ago, so maybe we should actually give Yuasa some credit for uh, actually sticking to the original storyline rather than that one thing that a lot of directors do by changing up the story to completely ruin the series for everybody. But in all seriousness though, I didn't think the last episode was anticlimactic at all. In fact, 
I thought it was goddamn beautiful. Oh, by the way, spoiler warning from here if you haven't seen it. Highly recommend you go see it. If you haven't, click this timestamp to skip the spoilers. You've been warned. Throughout the latter half of the show, there is this beautiful juxtaposition between demons and humans, making it seem like, at the end of the day, humans and demons are one in the same. Think of it as more of a demonic version of George Orwell's Animal Farm, but add way more gore and titties to the mix. Actually, on second thought, don't do that. That's fucking weird. That last scene where Dior starts crying in his ascended state of being shows that last sliver of humanity that still exists after a world without humanity. It's this chilling realization that humans, demons, and everything in between are all just as fucked up and demonic as one another. And you can't tell me that I'm the only one who watched that last episode and fucking nutted to the amount of End of Evangelion vibes and references I got from it. Like, look at that shit! To be fair, Devil Devilman was the inspiration for not only shows like Evangelion, but also a lot of either critically and commercially successful series like Berserk and Parasite, among many others. So for us longtime anime fans who are familiar with pretty much all these other series that did come from Devilman, it's kind of cool to see the origin of where all of our favorite character tropes and anime tropes came from. Because leave it up to a genius like Masaki Yuasa for making an almost 50 year old manga seem new and fresh again. Like, that is not easy to do, but he fucking nailed it. And honestly, as much as I hate to admit saying this, but you did good this time, Netflix. I think after the release of Devil May Cry Baby, we all simultaneously had that feeling that a father of a delinquent has after he became valedictorian. Uh, look son, you made some shitty choices in the past, and uh, God knows that I wanted to beat your ass about it, but uh, I'm proud of you now, my boy. I don't know why I did an Obama voice, he doesn't even have a son. But hey, if you've never seen Devil May Cry Baby, I suggest you go check it out. It's only 10 episodes, it's on Netflix, and if you enjoyed it just as much as I and a lot of other people in the anime community did, then those 10 episodes will just fucking fly past. It's just one thrilling existential hell of a ride, so I definitely recommend you check it out. Let me know your thoughts about the show or anything I talked about in this video in the comments below. And let's see if there truly will be anything to come out in anime of 2018 that can take away the anime of the year crown from this devil man's head. We're counting on you anime of 2018. Don't fuck up now! Also make sure to follow me over on Twitter for more shit posting and other incredibly boring tweets that you can like and retweet if you wish. And also let me give a special thank you to Samuel L. Marksley, Corey Jenkins, Boo Man Animu, Cobble Maniac, The Misfit Joker, Instagatrix, Bogdan Aksenenko, Rune Jacobson, Too Large to Float, Arya Man Varma, Nicholas Roman, I created this for Joey and it's very long. You're still here. F and X, Crescentia, and everybody else on my Patreon who supports me every single month. If you like what you see and you like to support your boy in what he does, because God forbid there's gonna be an Apocalypse 3.0 after Mr. Uh, Logan Paul fucked up big time, then uh, make sure to click that first link in the description below. I appreciate every single one of you, and there's some great rewards over there for you guys to hopefully enjoy. But anyways guys, thanks for watching. As always, like and favorite if you enjoyed, subscribe for more anime banner, and I'll see you guys in the next video of whatever I make. Keep watching anime. Johnny.